The Vishar have only one goal, to slay the gods. As subscribers here we love TTRPGs are aware, we have been exposing the secrets and lore around the Witch Queen of Perinland, Igwil, the mother of witches, who you might also know as Tasha. From learning about her mother, the Baba Yaga, the lore of witches, hags, succubi, and the inhabitants of the lost caverns of Sokan, such as the Bodak and Bahir, soon we'll be learning about her most famous lover, Grazit, the demon prince of the Triple Realm. Welcome, I'm your host, Atten, and while researching Grazit, I discovered some obscure and extremely dark lore that really took me by surprise. Prior to becoming a demon prince, it is said he had a hand in creating the Vishar. The Vishar are the most evil of all human variants. First introduced to us in 3.5's Book of Vile Darkness, the source material tells us the Vishar are to humans what Drow are to elves. And the Book of Vile Darkness is not simply a source book for 3.5, it is also a powerful evil tome of forbidden knowledge found within the game itself. An artifact of immense power that could be used as a MacGuffin for your own heroic adventures. So if you're interested in Grazit and want to learn about the wicked Vishar, or you want to include legends about the Book of Vile Darkness in your game, this video is for you. The dread tome known as the Book of Vile Darkness originated from the ink-stained quill of a Visharan sorcerer whose malevolent musings and unholy insights transcended the boundaries of mortal comprehension. Millennia bore witness to his wicked experiments and twisted studies, chronicled within the sinister scroll. In mere thousands of words, he encapsulated a darkness so profound that no other, not even the most depraved soul, had conceived of such maleficent thoughts. A death priest of Neril stumbled upon the eldritch scripture, augmenting its sinister verses. With fervent dedication, she tripled its length, inscribing her knowledge of malevolent deities, sacrificial rites, and nefarious magic. Soon, other malevolent priests were drawn to its profane allure and the singular scroll expanded into a macabre manuscript, teeming with knowledge born from polluted minds and abominable experiments. Some dared to query its infernal entities, transcribing their sinister utterances directly onto the accursed pages. The collection eventually fell into the hands of Vecna, a genocidal wizard and warlord, who, in his pursuit of power, augmented the scrolls with his own grisly discoveries. Upon his demise and rebirth as a lich, Vecna transcribed the profane scrolls into a bound volume, the cover an amalgamation of human flesh and demon bones, forged into a binding of dull metal for arcane symbols understood only by those who had traversed its entirety. Legend held that the realization of the sheer malevolence encapsulated within the symbols could shame even the depths of hell itself rendering the book an object of insatiable desire. Cultists devoted to Erythnal, Greyhawk's god of hate, envy, malice, and slaughter, guarded the unholy volume in a dim vault, employing it as the ultimate initiation into their innermost circles. Though a few copies surfaced during this period, most were flawed, leading readers into the infernal paths of the lower plains, where they vanished without a trace. During one of Greyhawk's many tragic nation-ending wars, the original scroll was pilfered by thieves, initiating a nightmarish odyssey through the annals of darkness. Records hinted at its residence within the personal library of Beelzebul, Lord of the Flies, most infamous of the archdevils, second only to Asmodeus, who, in a malevolent whimsy, appended a few pages of his own. Six complete copies, tainted by the fiend's influence, were known to exist, while threefold that number of defective copies and outright forgeries permeated the abyss. These malevolent tomes found refuge in evil temples, shadowed libraries, in the hands of sinister collectors. Vecna's original remained a coveted prize, sought after by every priest devoted to a dark deity. The Book of Vile Darkness, a compendium of malevolent deities, forbidden secrets, and black magic, wields an insidious potency that could corrupt even the most virtuous souls through defilement. Once the mind absorbed its tainted knowledge, the attached soul found no redemption, forever polluted and transformed by its evil. In stark contrast to its virtuous counterpart, the Book of Exalted Deeds, 
The Book of Vile Darkness does not mysteriously banish after consumption. Evil beings drawn to its malefic pages clung to it for reference, though not even the most evil of villains approach it carelessly. Many powerful fiends, guardians of the tome, observe its every move, for wherever it wanders, tendrils of its evil power follow in its wake. The evil etched into its pages is so great that ordinary plants wither in its presence, and normal animals will not approach it. In fact, even earthly stone will eventually crack and turn to powder if left in contact with it for too long. Only very powerful protective magic could prevent this, but even then, the air around the book will still become befouled. To understand the history of this book, let's go back to the lore, which tells us it began as a scroll inscribed by the stained quill of a Visharan sorcerer. So who or what are the Visharan? Whispers in the shadowed corners of lore speak of a race shrouded in malevolence, whispers seldom shared among enlightened minds, not merely due to the darkness encapsulated within, but also out of a profound shame. In the ancient eons, when gods endeavored to craft humanity, they molded the first man, bestowing upon him the gifts of life. Thus, the building blocks for the first Visharan were created. This inaugural being, newly birthed, traversed the wilds in predatory pursuit. The gods, curious observers of their fledgling creation, beheld the man as he slaughtered an innocent creature with his bare hands, a brutal revelation that sent shivers through the divine realms. Yet they continued their watchful gaze. Witnessing the man's ingenuity, the gods recoiled as he deftly fashioned a bone and sinew into a crude weapon. With newfound malice, the man turned upon his creators, brandishing the weapon, spewing words of curse and oaths of death, an unholy symphony of rebellion. While the deities remained untouched, they recoiled in disgust at the monstrous creation they had inadvertently wrought. In disdain, they obliterated the man, departing the scene with lessons learned and a solemn vow to return at some later date for a second attempt after understanding what had gone wrong. In the wake of their departure, a demon appeared on the scene to gather the remains of this barbaric proto-man and clandestinely spirited it away to an unreachable plateau, concealed beneath subterranean catacombs that festered with the vile corruptions of nature. There, the demon resurrected the being and, with sinister glee, crafted a companion for it. Granting them the ability to procreate, the demon vanished back to the abyss. Now, legends diverge on the identity of the demon responsible for the Visharan lineage, but as I previously stated, in the murk of ambiguity, Razit emerges as the most fitting progenitor. Visharans are a sinister variant of humanity, dwelling within a society steeped in evil. While ordinary human communities harbor a mix of good and neutral individuals, the Visharan are inherently malevolent. Unfazed by the label of evil, they claim a transcendence beyond such mortal constraints. Born of violence, anger, and pain, they comprehend only hatred, selfishness, and greed. Amidst their thirst for slaughter and mutilation, a singular fanatical goal pulses through their collective consciousness to slay the gods who created them. This unholy ambition binds them together. An unwilling society shackled by a shared hunger for divine demise. The Vishar are the god killers. Yet, despite their bloodthirsty nature, Visharans rarely wage war with their own kind, fostering a reluctant unity. Though violence against one another is not uncommon, typically for the purpose of forcibly producing offspring, uh, the Visharan have no great urge to extinguish the life of other Visharans. No, their murderous rage is typically reserved for the death of the gods. Mercy, kindness, and love are alien concepts to them, even within their insular communities. Unfamiliar with emotional leverage, they seldom exploit the feelings of others. Concepts that would repulse us, such as gore, filth, cruelty, torture, or even the consumption of repugnant vermin or insects, evoke no revulsion. Instead, they remain tools in the arsenal of the Visharan's pragmatic ruthlessness. Physically, a typical Visharan is similar to humans, with males exhibiting greater height and weight than the females. Their skin spans fair to pallid hues, hair is straight and as dark as their hearts. Facial hair adorns the men. 
Akin to humans, Visharans embrace short lifespans, reaching maturity at 15 and seldom surviving beyond a century. Interactions with other species mimics those of humans, as few discern the subtle distinctions. Abroad, Visharan treat other species as humans do, perpetuating an illusion of normalcy. The inscrutable plateau of Vishar in a well-defended realm is heavily fortified behind many deadly traps and horrible guardian monsters. Now, the precise location of their plateau is still unclear to me, so if you know where it is, please tell us in the comments. We know it isn't in the abyss, but other than that, my only guess is somewhere on its own remote demiplane or some distant and unexplored area in the world of Greyhawk. The Vishar rarely venture beyond its borders. They secure forced labor from any captives, humans or otherwise. The Vishar work tirelessly to achieve their singular goal to murder those who created them, destroyed them, and then abandoned them. Now, for such evil creatures, their society is somewhat surprising. You see, amidst their collective destructive demeanor, a Vishar society has evolved into a semblance of sophistication and organization. A council of elders, democratically elected, oversees Vishar as the Visharans staunchly resist despotic rule. Though lacking in stringent laws, each Visharan pursues personal desires and defense, a chaotic system functioning seamlessly due to their unyielding hatred binding them and their inherent inability to comprehend life otherwise. So as a game master, would you like to have the Visharan and the Book of Vile Darkness in your game? Well, first, I think it goes without saying that the Book of Vile Darkness and the Visharan should not be used in any groups with young players. These creations originate from when D&D's target audience skewed more mature and adult, unlike now with Wizards and Hasbro's kid-friendly, more money business model. But even then, the Book of Vile Darkness source book for 3.5 has a content warning, 18 and over. For this video, I had to finesse some of the descriptions given in this book, and I'm sure the current direction of the game is starkly contrast to what you'll find in these pages. The DM's Guide lists the Book of Vile Darkness as a wondrous item of artifact-level power. Should a character wish to risk their sanity by reading one, such a task requires 80 hours of work. Any non-evil creature attempting this must make a DC 17 charisma saving throw. On a failed save, their alignment changes to neutral evil. This is not a curse, and it can never be undone by anything short of a carefully worded wish spell. While Visharan are canonically evil through and through, some legends temper this by portraying them with sympathy and suggest they aren't actually evil, but just deeply misunderstood and unfairly generalized. How you portray them is completely up to you. But if you are using Grozit in your campaign, I recommend finding a way to include the Visharan. Perhaps even the Book of Vile Darkness might make an appearance. Whatever you do, just remember to be respectful of others and have fun with your adventures. And be sure to watch my other videos on this topic and keep checking back as I continue to add videos to the playlists for Igwill and Grazit. If this video has been useful to you, please let me know by liking the video, sharing it, and leaving a comment. That really helps YouTube know it was worth my effort and the time you took watching it. As always, if this is your first time here, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you in the next video.